Andy Spalding, University of Richmond School of Law. As you drive to Pyeongchang, eastbound from Seoul, you pass through a long stretch of largely undeveloped land, rolling hills, a uh, few small farms. But as you then enter into Pyeongchang and you see the valley there, you're stunned to find that the perimeter of the valley is surrounded by windmills, large, white, technologically sophisticated, energy generating windmills. Pyeongchang actually is aspiring to be the most environmentally sustainable games in history. How did that happen? How could games, once notorious for their detrimental impact on environments, become now a visual symbol of environmental sustainability? Well, it happened through a decades-long movement beginning in the early 90s to integrate the value of sustainability, environmental sustainability, into the Olympic Games. Question, are we seeing a similar trajectory today in relation to host country corruption. Could it be that in events now is associated with corruption could actually become over time a symbol of effective anti-corruption measures? What we're seeing in South Korea today are dramatic historic anti-corruption reforms as discussed in the previous videos that are occurring at the same time as the hosting of the Olympic Games. But something by accident, they were unintended uh, reforms. Could the Olympic movement become an intended uh, catalyst to reforms? Could the host country be left with a governance legacy? Well, our research project at the University of Richmond School of Law tries to explore that very possibility. We're writing a book now, and we'll have a series of blog posts uh, where we try to explain the prospect of leaving a governance legacy in the host country. Notably, the International Olympic Committee is moving in that direction now. Starting la just last year, the IOC has adopted in its model host city contract, a provision requiring the host city to adopt anti-corruption measures. What does that mean? Starting with Paris in 2024, the host city will be under a legally enforceable contractual obligation to reduce corruption related to the preparation for and hosting of the games. Now that's an important step, but it's just a step. What would be further steps? How could the IOC actually require host cities to adopt anti-corruption measures? Could the demonstration of a commitment to addressing corruption be a criterion for awarding bids? What would that criteria look like? What would the IOC look for in a host city? What kind of measures could they reasonably require? This is the future of Olympic anti-corruption reform. In the same way that we have taken measures to address uh, corruption in the bidding process, which are not effective perfectly yet, but we are making progress. In the same way we are taking measures to address uh, doping and other forms of competitive corruption, which again, not perfectly effective yet, but we're seeing their punitive value so far. Could we also see measures taken to incentivize and reward anti-corruption measures in the host city uh, for the Olympic Games? This, we think, is where this movement is going, and we look forward to watching it unfold. Thank you for listening.